Welcome to Intellectual Frog Legs. It still divides us as, as between those of us who think that a job must be found for Hillary Clinton, that the country would be somehow disgraced if, some, if she wasn't in an important position, and those of us who could do without her. Do you know the way to San Jose? I've been away so long, I may go wrong and lose my way. Do you know the way to San Jose? I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose. LA is a great big freeway. As police finally tried to restore order, protesters forced a police pickup to retreat. Police lines formed again, but the crowds only grew. Another young man was chased down like prey. Here's a fun factoid. Did you know that when a baby elephant's born, it weighs 250 pounds? It's a big baby. And it's made, which makes it the second biggest baby on the planet next to the never Trump idiots. You guys need to grow up. You guys need to grow up. Now, to kick things off and to get our blood pumping, we're gonna have the frog leg quiz. Here we go. In the year 852 AD, Pope Leo IV had a wall built around the Vatican. This wall was to protect Vatican City from A, climate change, B, transgender bathroom freedom fighters, or C, Muslims. And if you guess Muslims, you're right, making Pope Leo IV the first ever reported case of Islamophobia. You know, isn't this stuff just so ridiculous? Isn't it ridiculous? Anytime you disagree with the lunatic left, you're, di you're immediately diagnosed with some phobia. And the only, you know, the only phobia I have right now is I'm a Hillary clinton phobe a democrat phobe Yep. And here you go. If Donald Trump wins the election, it'll be the first time in our nation's glorious history that a billionaire has moved into public housing vacated by a black family. And welcome to Intellectual Frog Legs. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this stuff? Make California Mexico again? Really? Really? How about we make America, America again? How about we kick your ass out of here? <laughs> this is third world country stuff. You have police in full riot gear standing there. Just standing there while mobs of thugs are attacking innocent citizens going to hear a presidential candidate. No, 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 no. This is not America, my friend. This is not at that San Jose Trump rally, which is right outside of San Francisco, uh, AKA another sanctuary city, these violent socialist mobs were waiting right outside the event for it to finish, and they ambushed the Trump supporters, ambushed them. And then you got Telemundo, they were busted staging protesters, giving them, hold this, hold this Mexican flag, me here, talk. Is that the media staging a shot? Is that the media staging a shot? Is Telemundo staging a shot? Uh, probably. You know, and, te and, oh, and, te and Telemundo, they're owned by NBC. But this, my friends, is Obama Nation. Obama Nation. And in November, we have a choice. We have a choice. And we're gonna vote for Trump and put an end to this third world nonsense, or vote for Hillary and drive the final nail into America's coffin. 
And that's a fact. Run for your life! I'll cover you! Happiness is a warm gun. Cherokee people. Cherokee tribe. And you know what? I cringe when I hear these violent radicals called protesters. Protesters, my bud. They're blocking public roads, they block ambulances, they attack women, the men in wheelchairs, screaming obscenities at families with children, shoving their middle fingers in their faces. But the Democrats own this. The Democrats own this. And, and these lunatic lefties control the media, they control our government, they control our schools, they control our culture, our society, and it's not at all because they are champions in the arena of ideas, it's because they cheat. It's because they cheat and manipulate. I mean, just look how crazy it is. They say, Donald Trump's words are considered hate speech and they must be shut down at all costs. But the violence against the Trump supporters? Well, well, that's free speech. I watched Hillary's thing today, which was hard. It was like, it's like taking Salmonex. To watch her is like Salmonex. You ever hear Salmonex? Sleep all night. Bing. This episode of Intellectual Frog Legs is brought to you by Grow a Set, the all new testicular fortitude capsules. Now in grape and cherry flavors. You cannot have free speech without hate speech. I'm sorry. You can't have it without happy speech or indifferent speech. That is the definition of free speech. Uh, you can't have freedom of speech with conditions. <laughs> but just like the ridiculous hate crimes, they, can, they, they immediately are applying a motive. It was hate. Uh, you know, you can't place a motive before a trial. But uh, and, and tell me this, if someone's murdered and it's considered a hate crime, as opposed to just a regular crime, are they more dead or extra dead or something? <laughs> what was that, that Princess Bride movie? He's just mostly dead. <laughs> now, mostly dead, he's slightly alive. Now, all dead, well, with all dead, there's usually only one thing that you can do. What's that? Go through his clothes and look for loose change. But see, that's why they were in Ferguson and Baltimore, they were screaming for the heads of those policemen because they had already applied the motive of hate. But that's just more of the lunatic left tactics to control everything, everything. From the climate, to how much McDonald's pays a cashier, to how much water you use to flush your business, and to who the hell is allowed to use which bathroom. Well, thank goodness it's time for viewer mail before I have a complete conniption fit. This is from Julie in Scottsdale, Arizona. It says, Dear Joe Dan, you are so handsome and witty and funny and handsome. <laughs> I love your show, but I've noticed you've been focusing more on serious politics than ridicule of than a ridicule of liberals, atheists, and Muslims. Well, you know, Julie, you're absolutely right. And thanks for the, and thanks for the note. Because you see, four years ago, a lot of us woke up on the morning of November 7th, 2012 to see that Barack Hussein Obama had been re-elected. It's like getting punched in the gut. I, you know, cause I, I didn't think there was any way Obama would get re-elected. I mean, I was sick, man. <laughs> like, like a lot of us. And we were wondering, what, what could we have done more? What else could we have done? And see, I don't want to have that feeling again. I don't want to have that feeling again. And we as a nation cannot afford that feeling again. So this is the most important election in my lifetime. We are in serious trouble. America is on the verge of collapse, economic and otherwise. And we have two choices. And it's not some ridiculous third party candidate. 
Yeah. I will bet well, anyone on the stage, a nice dinner, that, that Donald Trump is not going to be the nominee. Donald Trump is the only choice that gives us a fighting chance to save this country. Because if Hillary wins, it's game over. Stick a fork in us because we're done. And, and the violent socialists will have won. So, no matter what you do for a living, you need to spread the word. You need to, to educate people. You need to educate yourself. But that does not mean getting these silly ass fights with dumbasses on Twitter or Facebook. And you know what? You can't educate everybody. You can't. Some people are too far gone. Don't worry about them. If you're president, will your husband divest himself of any association with the foundation? Well, Anderson, you know, we'll cross that bridge uh, if and when we come to it, but let me just try to set the record straight. Were there, you know, one or two instances that slipped through the cracks? Yes. <laughs> $12,495. That's how much this Giorgio Armani jacket is. The ironic part, Hillary Clinton wore it during an income inequality speech. Now, Donald Trump just made an impressive run through a collection of 17 of our nation's finest politicians, governors and senators, even a brain surgeon. But none of Trump's opponents so far have been as ruthless, as sociopathic, and as crooked as Hillary Clinton. No way. And when you're facing the Clintons, you take nothing for granted, nothing. Because they own the media just like they own the Democrat Party. And then look at, our, and look at the Clinton Foundation, because Lord knows our crooked media won't. Their biggest payments don't come from any place in the United States. They come from foreign investors, foreign businesses, and foreign governments eager to please the former president and first lady. That's why they're such awesome people, you know. And the media just turns a blind eye to everything that Clintons do. I mean, look, they, they don't hesitate to grill Ivanka Trump about her dad's alleged mistreatment of women. Many of the women interviewed, quote, reveal unwelcome romantic advances, unending commentary on the female form, a shrewd reliance on ambitious women, and unsettling workplace conduct. Is there unending commentary on the female form? There's another woman who is quoted in the article that says that Donald Trump groped her, but he's not a groper. It's not who he is. And, and I've known my father, obviously, my whole life, and he has total respect for women. He's running against a woman, and he has said that he's already using gender as a way to run against her. Well, is he using gender or is she using gender? I think she's using gender as well. Man, that Nora O'Donnell, she looks like she's suffering from a bad case of gas. Either that or, well, she's just a bitch. <laughs> but you never see Chelsea Clinton ask these type of questions, and you won't. Yeah, I'm gonna be 55 later this month. I don't, I'm too, I'm too young to be that old. Damn it. <laughs> Everybody knows how crooked Hillary is. You can't beat the truth out of that woman. Although I bet uh, a lot of you guys would like to try. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Anyway, but we have some younger voters, some younger viewers that are not really aware of her rich history of deceit. And uh, so anyway, in a, in a case of accidental journalism, I stumbled on an article from, from 1996, 20 years ago, from the New York Times, an essay by William Sapphire called Blizzard of Lies about our then First Lady Hillary Rodden Clinton. And the first paragraph reads, quote, Americans of all political persuasions are coming to the sad realization that our First Lady, a woman of undoubted talents, who was a role model for many of her generation, is a congenital liar. New York Times. <laughs> of course, we all know that Bill Clinton's a congenitalia liar. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. But seriously, this New York Times speech from 20 years ago, from two decades ago, 
and tell you that they talk about her 10,000% profit on commodity trading. Yeah. <laughs> well, she just got a knack for those things, doesn't she? Uh, but they said she had to lie. She had to lie because otherwise she would be admitting that she took a $100,000 bribe. New York Times. <laughs> and then they go on to talk about Travelgate, the mysterious death of her former partner and closest confidant, uh, Vince Foster, who was at the time well, well, was White House counsel or something. But anyway, you can read the whole article over at the website. If it's not on the front page, which it should be, just type Hillary in the search box. But the list of Clinton scandals is insane. Uh, like before the Obama administration, it was the Clintons using the IRS as a political weapon. Aside from auditing a laundry list of conservative groups, the Clintons went after individuals. And you may recognize some of their names. Jennifer Flowers, Paula Jones, Juanita Broderick, but I'm sure Hillary had nothing to do with that. But then the other, another scandal, which is like an embarrassment to our nation, you remember the Clintons got busted trying to steal almost $200,000 of furniture and other stuff from the White House? My goodness, they won't fix that trailer up. <laughs> the Clintons brought so much disrespect and dishonor to the White House last time they were there. We can't let them back in there. Are you crazy? You got Bill's sexual picadillos in the Oval Office are just scratching the surface of it. Look out, we're taking sniper fire. Follow me, I'll cover you. Don't forget China Gate, China Gate, where Chinese corporations allegedly supported Bill Clinton's re-election campaign with big money in exchange for U.S. technology. It would take a freaking mini-series to go through all the Clinton scandals. Hi folks, this is Bill Mitchell. I am the host of Your Voice Radio. We are the fastest growing conservative political talk show on Spreaker.com. You can catch us Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time or stream us 24-7 whenever you like. But make sure that you stop in on Thursday nights because that's when Joe Dan Gorman of Intellectual Progress joins me as a co-host. We have a great time. We'll talk to you there. Bye. The silent majority is silent no more. Well, the Trump train is going 600 miles an hour, folks. I'll tell you that. Well, rather pick a random homeless person passed out in front of a liquor store uh, to be president of the United States over Hillary Clinton. I swear I would. Uh, and I don't want this to appear like I'm just voting against Hillary. Uh, of course, that's certainly enough. <laughs> but I'm actually fired up to vote for Donald Trump. Fired up. Donald Trump is the only chance we have to break the establishment's death grip on our government and get the government's boot off the neck of small business and the private sector. A major donor to the Clinton Foundation was put on a sensitive government security advisory board even though he had no known experience in the area. I'd like to invite to the stage Raj Fernando. What he was known for before and after his appointment was raising and giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to Democratic campaigns and as much as $250,000 to the Clinton Foundation. ABC News, you have just a second to talk here. When we approached Fernando at the 2012 Democratic Convention... How did you get appointed to that board? Can you talk about that? 
How do you know my name out of curiosity? He became upset, and we were threatened with arrest. Yeah, this is me. I think the will be arrested. I'll be arrested for, me, for asking questions of this man? The Clinton campaign declined to comment on our story, and the State Department said it's not unusual for the Secretary's Chief of Staff to play a role. As for Fernando, he has continued to raise big dollars for the Clinton campaign and has given more than a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. In fact, he'll be one of her superdelegates at next month's convention, Amy. How can he close me up? On what ground? I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody out at once. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Please stop by the website, sign up for the show alerts, and check out some of our columns. Uh, this week we have that New York Times column, and we have one called Only a Fool Dismisses God. You heard me. Intellectual Frog Legs is 100% funded by you guys, the viewers, so all donations, large and small, are greatly appreciated. And if you're too broke to donate, we're probably cousins. We'll see you at family dinner, cuz. <laughs> we'll sit by each other. And while I would love to have a full-time sponsor to take some pressure off, I'm not gonna let somebody come in and dictate the content of the show. Sorry. I just thought everything was expensive until I realized I was just poor. <laughs> Please share the show with everybody you can. Send it over to the good folks in like Life Set, The Daily Caller, Breitbart, Hannity, The Gateway Pundit. Come to feature it on the weekends. And thanks again for the kind donations, your awesome support, and I hope you'll come back for the next exciting episode of Intellectual Frog Legs. God bless.